This is Colin Selleck of Dinkin University. This is a video lecture on the review of chapters 18 and 19 of the book uh, Hibbler Dynamics. So first we're going to define kinetic energy for a rigid body. And you can see this rigid body in blue here. Uh, it's undergoing um, angular velocity. It has angular acceleration um, and the velocity of the mass center. Now the kinetic energy of this rigid body is defined as one half times the mass times the velocity of the mass center squared plus one half the moment of inertia about the mass center times omega squared. And make sure that you use the velocity of the mass center and the moment of inertia about the mass center. Now some simplifications can occur if the body is undergoing uh, pure translation that means it is not rotating and of course this omega term goes to zero and the kinetic energy of that body is one half the mass times the velocity of the mass center squared so may, remember that's for pure translation no rotation and the other simplification that can occur if you're in pure rotation if you're rotating about a fixed point O then the kinetic energy becomes one half the moment of inertia about O times omega squared Remember, use mass moment of inertia about O there. Uh, remember the equation, you can parallel axis. If you need to transfer uh, the moment of inertia from the mass center to any other point, you use this right here, where D is a perpendicular distance between the axes O and G. Now, we're going to define the work of a force. Basically, the work of a force is the force times the distance that it travels. And remember, use the component of the force in the direction of travel. Now, work of a weight uh, is defined as minus W times delta Y. See, delta Y is positive, then it takes work to move that body up. Therefore, the work is negative. And the work of a spring force for a linear spring, the work done by a spring is minus one half k, where k is a spring constant, times s2 squared minus s1 squared. And make sure you measure these values from the unstretched length of the spring. And don't forget that minus sign. Normal and frictional forces don't do any work. That's because they're acting at the instantaneous, instantaneous center of zero velocity. So there's no displacement. So there's no work done by those forces. Now the work of a couple, uh, you can also call it a moment. Uh, there's an external moment being applied to a body. Uh, then the work done by that moment is the integral of the moment uh, over theta. And if the moment is constant, you know, you can bring the moment outside the integral sign. So the work done by a moment is the moment times delta theta if the moment is constant. If the moment's not constant, then you can use this form of the equation. And you'll have to have the moment as a function of theta in order to use that. Now the principle of work and energy. This is just like for particle motion. Um, the kinetic energy at state 1 plus the work done between states 1 and 2 is equal to the kinetic energy at state 2. Now moving into section 18.5, this is the conservation of energy. If you see a problem that involves distance, that's a key indicator that the conservation of energy is a good way to solve this problem. And conservation of energy is easier to use in the principle of work energy. Uh, this is because the calculation of the work of a conservative force is simpler. But what makes a force conservative? So a force is conservative if the work done by the force is independent of the path. In this case, the work depends only upon the initial and the final positions of the object. The, the way it gets there is, is irrelevant. And the conservative forces that we encounter in dynamics are gravitational forces, you know, the weight and springs, elastic forces. So what this means is that, for instance, the weight you know, the mg, and that's the state one. Then, you know, the body moves around and ends up here, mg. Well, 
the work done by that force is just you know, this distance times the force. It's independent of the path. Now, when a rigid body is acted upon by conservative forces, uh, the work done by those forces is conserved. So the sum of the kinetic and potential energy is going to remain the same. And this is called conservation of energy. So it just says kinetic energy at state 1 plus potential energy at state 1 is equal to kinetic energy at state 2 plus potential energy at state 2. Now the potential energy due to gravity is defined as the weight times the change in height, which you see here. And this is positive. And I like to think of it, um, if you're above the datum, then you have more energy than if you were at the datum. So therefore, you have more potential energy. So it's positive. And the other conservative force that we encounter in dynamics are springs. And the potential energy of a spring is defined as 1 half times the spring constant times s squared. And remember to measure s from the unstretched length of the spring. And since s is squared here and the spring constant is always positive, the potential energy of a spring force is always positive. Now I move into chapter 19, uh, linear and angular momentum. Uh, the linear momentum of a body is defined as its mass times the velocity of the mass center. And the velocity of the mass center is a vector, so linear momentum is also a vector. And the angular momentum of a rigid body is defined as the mass moment of inertia about the mass center times its angular velocity omega. And we denote that by h. So a couple of special cases, if the body is in pure translation, the omega term goes to zero because omega is zero. So therefore, the linear momentum, of course, is the mass times the velocity of the mass center. And there is no angular momentum. It's equal to zero. And the other special case is rotation about a fixed axis, O, here. In that case, the uh, linear momentum is the mass times the velocity of the mass center. And the angular momentum is moment of inertia about the mass center times omega. Now that will simplify when you do the parallel axis theorem uh, and transfer it over to point O. It'll simplify out to this right here. So moment of inertia for a body rotating about a fixed axis O is the moment of inertia about O times omega. And in general planar motion, that just means that the body is both translating and rotating. It's going to have both linear momentum and angular momentum. Now the angular momentum about another point A other than the mass center is given by this equation right here. So the, moment of the angular momentum about the point A is equal to the, moment, the mass moment of inertia about G times omega plus the mass times the velocity of the mass center times D, where D is the perpendicular distance between the velocity of the mass center vector and A, which you see right here. So the principal impulse and momentum, uh, we have these two equations here and here. So the linear momentum at state 1 plus the sum of, a, of all the forces acting on the body integrated over time is equal to the linear momentum at state 2. And we call this the linear impulse. And remember, linear impulse is mass times the velocity of the mass center, so this equation. And angular impulse and moment, angular impulse, angular momentum equation is uh, angular momentum at state one plus the summation of all the moments acting about the mass center integrated over time is equal to the angular momentum at state two. And remember, the angular momentum is I about G times omega. And now we'll move into section 19.3. This is the conservation of linear momentum. Uh, if there are no external forces acting on the body, and this term goes away. And you're left with the linear momentum at state 1 is equal to the linear momentum at state 2. Of course, the linear momentum is the mass times the velocity of the mass center. And finally, conservation of angular momentum. If there are no external moments acting on the body, then this term goes to 0. So the angular momentum at state 1 is equal to the angular momentum at state 2. And remember, angular momentum is I about G times omega. Okay, that's it. See you in cyberspace.